You might also not need a COO if what you're really after is a functional head or heads to bring expertise to specific domains. If you're having issues with oversight of a particular area or just need one domain off your plate, consider the makeup of your management team before you bring in a second in command. A COO can help coordinate the team, but is not a substitute for a department head. If you only need help with finance, hire a head of finance who may get the CFO title. If you're lagging on the technical stuff, hire a VP of technology or a CTO. Get people who will stick to running their own functional area. Chapter four, do I need a COO? My goal in my role is to enlighten the CEO's load. He shouldn't have to focus on the details, especially as we continue to grow, and it's not scalable. I want him to be able to depend on me to ensure that things are being able to be completed to his satisfaction. When that doesn't happen, it feels awful for both of us. Rika Varga Vien, CEO of Alliance member and Chief of Staff at Philip Jeffries Limited. I like making money and I like saving money. So let's start by saving you 250,000 with a simple piece of advice. Don't hire a COO if you don't need one. The right COO in the right situation is transformative, but if they're not necessary, then they represent needless expense, disruption, and commitment. You'd do better to keep your money. Try an EA first. First up, if all you're really trying to do is get done and free up time, try hiring an EA. It sometimes drives me crazy when people say I need a COO. No, what they need is someone who actually has the time to do stuff, in which case they should try an EA, who comes a lot cheaper than a COO. They need someone to get a lot off their plates. They may have come across an old business saying that I first heard from my friend Jack Daly. If you don't have an executive assistant, you are one. If you wake up in the morning going, ugh, and don't want to face the day, and if you constantly say to yourself, I just need some help, it's time to look for it. Still, the wrong person can be worse than no one, so plan carefully. Go back to the activity inventory and identify the administrative tasks that you can delegate to an EA. See how much that gets off your plate before considering the next level. If you still have higher level responsibilities to offload, you may very well need a second in command, but you're going to pay them well, so make sure that they'll be working on the areas of the business that you're either not good at or that drain you of energy. Hire the right heads. You might also not need a COO if what you're really after is a functional head or heads to bring expertise to specific domains. If you're having issues with oversight of a particular area or just need one domain off your plate, Consider the makeup of your management team before you bring in a second in command. A COO can help coordinate the team, but is not a substitute for a department head. If you only need help with finance, hire a head of finance, who may get the CFO title. If you're lagging on the technical stuff, hire a VP of technology or a CTO. Get people who will stick to running their own functional area. A COO doesn't necessarily have the deep expertise in any one domain, but strength in a number of areas. Even if they're particularly good with finance, say, or marketing or legal, that expertise will likely take a backseat to people and strategy, planning, dealing with other departments, and working in different leadership styles. Use the activity inventory to identify the tasks, projects, or responsibilities you need to hire for. It may be that they point to a specific function or functions. That's just a sign that you don't need a second in command yet, just a very strong VP of IT, finance, marketing, or sales. It's much cheaper and easier to find such a person Plus, it's also easier to exit them from the organization when they've done their job. The time to hire a COO is when your activity inventory leaves you with multiple overflowing buckets of tasks. That's when you need strong, coordinating leadership to help orchestrate them all. Hiring a COO is a much greater commitment than hiring a functional head, and you need to get it right. Cut back to your core. If you're thinking about hiring a COO because you can't keep visibility across all your projects, you could always flip the problem. Perhaps rather than hiring a COO to handle the projects you can't, you should consider whether you have too many core projects. You might be better off scaling back. Take some time to figure out whether your core projects are truly core. Remember, of course, that if you do hire a COO, they might come in and quickly identify that you have too many projects in the mix. If this happens, they'll offer suggestions to streamline with an eye toward working on the critical few projects versus the important many. Go fractional. Another possibility is to consider before hiring a full-time COO is hiring a fractional COO. This is a comparatively recent development that has rapidly established its own core niche because it's so useful to many businesses. A fractional COO is usually a former senior exec who has chosen to work for multiple companies rather than just one. A company usually hires them to coach an executive team, to lead core projects, or to do whatever is required. 
but doesn't need them on a day-to-day -day basis. Many COOs get started this way before they become permanent somewhere, if they ever do. A fractional COO can be really useful for small or mid-sized companies that don't need or can't afford a full-time COO. It allows them to scale up without paying a full-time salary. It frees up their teams to execute while making sure there is a clear path ahead and with the right systems and operations to bring growth. The companies can leverage all the benefits a full-time COO in the specific areas needed and continue to look after the rest of the business themselves. Working with a fractional COO also gives the CEO a chance to analyze how they might eventually work with a full-time COO when the time is right. And it gives them a taste of the contribution the right COO could make to their business. In fact, when I started coaching CEOs back in 2007, I called my company Back Pocket COO. The idea being that I was in their back pocket and they could pull me out for advice and coaching when they needed me. The concept worked as I had three companies in my first year paying me $120,000 each to be their fractional COO. It's something I no longer do, but I loved at the time. A hire must add value. You've hired an EA. You've got strong leaders for all your functions. You've made sure your core projects are all adding value. You've tried working with a fractional COO and your activity inventory is still telling you that you need to hire a second in command. The next step is to hire a COO, right? Not necessarily. Hiring a COO is such a huge step that it's worth pausing to ask yourself the last key question. Can I afford to make this hire? The answer works on different levels, including the bottom line. Will this hire pay for itself? There's no point in hiring a COO unless they will add more value than the cost of their salary. As a rule of thumb, you should be looking for every employee to return a minimum of 2x and preferably 4x on their pay because this is what you'll need that increase in gross margin that the company makes to pay for themselves and to break even. A COO is no different, though their value goes beyond dollar amount, which makes it essential for you to be clear on your objective. There are four main reasons to bring in a COO. To increase efficiency, to make employees or customers happier, to grow the economic value of the company, and to grow profitably. Any advance a COO makes in those areas adds to the COO's value. Do you want to increase sales value as you build towards an exit, for instance? Or are you aiming to free up your own time? If it's the latter, the COO might not directly drive more profitability, but could take 50 hours a week off your plate so you could spend 10 more elsewhere. If you can afford it, it can be worthwhile to forego some profit to gain a significant amount of time. A COO is for the long term. As we'll see later, bringing in a COO can add a potential cost in terms of organizational upheaval. Ask yourself whether there's a price worth paying to make the hire. You're dropping a giant boulder into the pond of your organization. It's bound to create ripples. Hiring a second in command is not like onboarding a management team role that slips in almost unnoticed. If you already have strong operational department heads with good domain expertise, then the COO's arrival can easily put people's noses out of joint. Be prepared for resentment, pushback, and even resignations. The third potential cost that you need to be able to afford is commitment. Hiring a COO is a decision with long-term impact. If you're just looking for a way out of a short-term crisis, a consultant will likely offer a better fix, as well as easier to hire and let go. It won't come with any of those close personal relationship dynamics that come with a COO. So stay ahead of the curve as a COO. This next video is packed with great leadership lessons for you. It'll really help you as you continue in your growth.